Before we can really learn how to use Modo effectively with Macs, we need to learn the basics of Modo itself, where everything is, how to select things, common tools, and some things that are unique to Modo that you need to know about to use Modo efficiently. In these next few videos, we're going to cover the bare minimum you need to know to make your way around Modo and understand its workflow. Later, we'll cover topics that are more Max related and more project oriented. And don't forget, there are many other free videos from the Foundry that explain many of the Modo tools further, so check those out if you get stuck on something. In this first video, we're going to start off by looking around the Modo user interface. This will give you a good idea where all the tools are, but we won't go into too much depth on any of them yet. It's important to get our bearings when tackling a whole new tool set, especially one as feature rich as Modo. For the most part, I'll be using a stock, clean Moto 801 installation without any added plugins or scripts. Just be aware that there are many useful Moto scripts available online that can really speed up your work. In a later video, we'll go over some of the cool plugins that are available for Moto. Now, you may have already been playing around in Moto and may have changed some things regarding the interface, so let's make sure we're looking at the same UI. The first thing we're going to do is restore the UI to its factory default. To do that, we just go to the File menu, and go down and select Reset. And we'll make sure we're using the normal tabbed baseline version of our interface. So I'll just go to Layout and click on Restore and make sure normal tabbed baseline version is selected. So now let's have a look around. At the top you'll see we have a strip of menu items with drop downs and below that you'll see we have all these different tabs. These are called the Interface Layout tabs. And we can either click through the tabs, like so, or if we hold down control and the grave accent key, kind of the reverse apostrophe looking thing that's on the same key as the tilde, we can bring up a pie menu that allows us to switch between tabs and even add our own favorites to the menu. Moto has many other pie menus and we'll see some of them later. The tabs are broken out by the types of different tasks an artist will normally be doing, such as modeling, painting, creating UVs, and animating. Inside each tab are the tools you'll use to do those specific tasks. As opposed to Max, where the UI remains fairly static, Modo's UI can instantly change, sometimes drastically, to make all the tools you need for the current task easily accessible and to give you as much screen real estate as possible. Let's start with the Model tab and the Model Quad tab. As you've probably guessed, this is where we want to be for creating objects, or meshes as they're referred to in Modo. But what's the difference between the Model tab and the Model Quad tab? Well, you'll notice that in the Model tab, we have one large viewport to work in. And in the Model Quad tab, we have a more traditional top, front, and right orthographic modeling view. This is really the only visual difference between these two tabs. You'll notice as I switch back and forth between them, that the tools over here on the left are exactly the same as are the menus over here on the right. But there's a significant workflow difference between these two tabs that relates to this vertical grid, you'll notice here, called the work plane. We'll get into the work plane more later, but it suffices to say that it's a powerful part of Modo's modeling workflow. Now, no matter if you're in the Model tab or the Model Quad tab, take a look over here on the left and you'll see some tools for making primitives, some transform tools, and some tab tool sets accessible on this vertical sub-tab menu. And this arrangement is on other tool set tabs as well. On the right, we have a couple of tabbed panels. You'll be using these panels extensively for setting up your scenes, creating materials, setting properties, and other things. And they're present in almost every layout tab, and we'll get into them much more in a later video. Now, if we go on to the Paint tab, we have a similar arrangement of vertical tabs and tools like we saw in the Model and Model Quad tab. Now it's worth noting that the Paint tab actually contains more tools than you might think based on its name. It's much more than just tools for painting bitmaps on a 3D object. The Paint tab is also where you can find tools to sculpt your meshes, set up guides for hair, paint vertex maps, and sculpt particles. Also notice that another panel with tabs has appeared down here at the bottom. This is a preset browser, and there are some presets, such as brushes and images, that you can use for sculpting and painting. Of course, you can add your own content to these libraries as well for quick access. Moving on to the Topo tab, we have the tools for retopologizing an object in Modo. 
Now this may not look like that many tools, but this topology pen tool is very powerful and well designed and does most of the heavy lifting when it comes to retopologizing an object very quickly. Also notice the baking tab here that lets you bake out a quick normal and diffuse map from your high poly object down to the low poly object you created with the retopology tools. Before we move on to the UV tab, you may have noticed these two buttons up here that currently say Model and Sculpt. Well, these activate floating tool palettes that you can use if you want to stay in the current interface layout tab, but need tools from the Model tab or the Sculpting tools. So if I click on the one that says Model, you can see that we get a floating panel with the modeling tools on it that we can quickly activate and use. If we select the UV tab, by default we get a split screen, which you can slide left and right. On the left we get our UV space grid, and on the right a perspective viewport. Most of the tools are grayed out at the moment because we don't have an object or any UV seams selected. Moving on to the layout tab, we now have a light and camera visible on our viewport. If I click on this items tab, you'll see we have an empty mesh item, a camera, and a directional light. Now in Max, there's no default camera in our project, but in Moto, the directional light and the camera are automatically added to every new scene you begin. It's important to note now that this camera and light have been here all along, but the layout tab is the first one that is set to have them visible in the viewport by default. We can make them visible anytime we want though, just by bringing up the viewport options. For example, let's jump back to the Model tab. And to bring up the viewport options, you can either click on this little gear right here, up in the upper right, or just press the O key. Under the Vertical Visibility tab, you can turn on Show Lights and Show Cameras. And now we can see them in the Model tab viewport. However, they really just clutter up the viewport while we're trying to model, so that's why they're not on by default. And if we jump over to the Topo tab, they're no longer visible. This is a good example of one way you can customize the visibility settings of each of the tabs to your liking. Okay, so let's jump back to the Layout tab and look around some more. The Layout workspace is where we start putting our scenes together and start blocking out the positions and properties of cameras and lights and objects. It's also where we can add meshes as well as play with material and environment presets. Down here at the bottom, you'll see we have some more presets, sort of like what we saw back in the Paint tab. There are materials, environments, meshes, and other things. Let's put a couple of the mesh presets into our scene. I'm going to select meshes and go to the interior category. Then I'm going to go over to the tabletop subcategory. Now I want to add this coffee cup to my scene. I can either drag it into my scene and drop it where I want it, or I can just double click it and it will appear in the center of my scene. I'm going to go over here and select the coffee cup and hit Shift A just to fit it in my viewport. Now I'm going to add the milk pot. This time I'll drag and drop it into our scene. And if you look over at our item list, you'll see we now have the milk pot and the coffee cup in our scene. And notice that the coffee cup, saucer, and spoon are all part of our coffee cup 01 mesh. Now let's select both of those, Shift A, to fit them both in the viewport. Before we move on, I'm going to switch my viewport rendering mode from shaded to advanced OpenGL. And I can either do it from the menu like I just did, or I can hold down the control and two key to get a pie menu and select it from the pie menu. And I'm just switching because I like the advanced OpenGL look better than the shaded look. Okay, now that we've got something in our scene, let's quickly touch on basic selecting, deselecting, and moving items in Modo. These are things you're going to do all the time in Moto, so now's a good time to get a handle on how it works. To select between items, we're going to make sure we're in items mode, and we can just click on the item that we want. We can hold down the shift key and select multiple items, and we can select our items by selecting them on the items list. To deselect just one item out of a multi-item selection, just hold down the control key and click on the object you want to deselect. You can also lasso with the right mouse button. And if you right click in the viewport, you can bring up a popover menu that will let you select the lasso style. We can also paint select just by holding down the left mouse button and dragging over the items that we want. All of these selection tools work the same when you're in component mode too. For example, 
If I select the milk pot and then go into polygons mode, you'll see that I can paint select, lasso select, shift select, and so on. And now I'm going to go back into items mode. Now let's see how we move things in Modo. With the milk pot selected, we can go over to the transform tools and select them either from their icons over here, or we can use the keyboard shortcuts, which realistically is probably how most people activate the transform tools. And thankfully, the main ones are the same as they are in Max. We press W for move, and then we can move. E for rotate, and we can rotate. And R for scale. Control Z to undo some of those transforms. And by pressing the Y key, we can bring up the all-in-one transform tool that lets you do all three movements without switching gizmos. Control Z to undo that as well. And I'll hit the space bar to drop the transform tool. Now let's move on to the setup tab. If I go up and select setup on this vertical tab menu here, you'll see that it has tools for creating curves, creating skeletons, setting up hierarchies, aligning items, and a few other things. There's also a vertical tab labeled modifiers, but the tools in the modifiers tab in Modo are not like the numerous modifiers you're used to using in the modifier stack in Max. They're really similar in name only, and we'll get into all of that in a later video. There are also tools here used in character animation, such as inverse kinematics, and actors and sets. The next tab down is the deformers tab, and Modo has some very powerful order of operations deformers to work with. These deformers are probably the closest thing Modo has to Max's non-destructive modifier stack, and again we'll take a look at how they work in another video. Next we have the weighting tab, for doing vertex weighting, and the next tab labeled dynamics, contains tools for setting up dynamic simulations in Modo. These tools are similar to Max's Mass Effects dynamic system. Finally, we have the Particles tab, with tools for setting up complex particle simulations similar to Max's particle flow system. If we move on to the Animate tab, you'll see we get a nice big workspace with the timeline and other tools down here at the bottom. We'll talk a lot more about animation in the animation video a little later. And the last tab is the Render tab for when we're ready to set up our scene for rendering. You'll see we've got an iterative preview render up here, and if I hit Shift A, I can fit my objects into the scene. Move that slightly. And you can think of Moto's preview renderer as you would the iRay Active Shade renderer in Max. Down below is our camera view, and you can see that it matches what we see in the render preview window. But we can change this view to a perspective view, or any other view we want. I'm going to move my milk pot down. It looks like it's floating a little bit. And over on the right, you'll see that we have the item list panel, as well as the shader tree, with a properties panel taking up the right edge. Up at the top, you'll see a couple of buttons, one labeled render and one labeled render window. But before I click on render, I want to make our scene a little more interesting by quickly adding a tabletop surface and an environment. So I'm going to jump back to the Layout tab, and I'm going to select the Basic category, and I'm going to double-click on the Ground Plane preset. Now usually I'd just create a plane primitive, but now you've seen how to do it this way if you want. Now I'm going to switch to the Environments tab, and I'm going to make sure I'm in the Outdoor category, and then I'm going to double-click on this Clamped Physical Sun preset which will add a sun and sky to our scene. Finally, let's give our tabletop a material by going to the Materials tab, selecting the Wood category, and then the Teak subcategory. Then I'm just going to drag this Satin Finish Teak material onto the plane that represents our tabletop. And one way we can quickly see the results of all this without going to the Render tab is just by making sure Advanced OpenGL is on, which it is, and by changing Ray GL from off to full. But let's go ahead and jump back over to the Render tab. And you can see that our scene has changed quite a bit. We've now got a material on our tabletop and an environment that's helping light our scene. 
but it's actually obviously too bright. See how the coffee cup is getting blown out over here. And the reason for that is because this directional light is still turned on. So if I turn off the directional light, you'll see we now have a nice starting point for our little coffee cup scene here. I'll just move it a little bit, center it up a little nicer. So now we're ready to render, and we can either hit the F9 key or the render button up here, like so. And you'll see our scene start to render here in the render window. One thing to note is that Modo, unlike Max, always renders from a camera view when you hit F9 or the render button. You won't ever accidentally render from a perspective view or any other viewport you currently have activated, and you don't ever have to lock the rendered view to be the camera since it always is. If you do want to render from another view, say the perspective view, like we have selected down here, we can just hit the F10 key and Modo will render from our current view. Also, it's possible to delete the camera, but there's really no reason to. Now, if you take a look up here next to the render tab, you'll see a little plus sign. And if you click and hold on it, you'll see there are lots of options for creating your own tabs that live up here as well. And that's a very quick overview of the Moto interface. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of where certain tools are found in Moto, even though you may not know how to use them yet. Next, we're going to look at navigating around in Moto, and we'll see how to make Moto behave a little more like Macs.